Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Good morning, fellow Christians. We are so blessed you have joined us today. If you're a guest, please take a few moments to fill out the pew card and place it in the offering plate on your way out this morning. We pray you will join us again. We are blessed today to welcome the Wayne, Reverend Wayne Gardner back to our pulpit. And this time we gave him more than an hour's notice. <laughs> so no telling what we'll get this morning. Thank you, Wayne. We appreciate you coming and helping us out once again. Uh, please note the activities for this coming week in your bulletin. And the House of Worship Committee has moved their meeting to this coming Wednesday uh, due to the Thanksgiving holiday. And I just want to add at this point, this committee is really in need of help. And if you would like to be a part of preserving this beautiful house of God that we have, Please contact Jim Gobin. He welcomes anyone to volunteer or become a member of this committee. You're also reminded to bring fruit next Sunday to fill over 25 baskets to be delivered to our shut-ins. If you would like to assist in the delivery, please contact Jim Thorson. And also, please remember our Thanksgiving dinner, which we're all uh, excited about, which will be next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. And as a reminder, the deadline to purchase tickets is Thursday, November 18th. Um, due to the fact that this is a catered meal and we're paying a caterer, no tickets will be sold after that date. And um, June Bill will be in the South Foyer after church if you wish to purchase tickets today. They will be available in the church office up until Thursday next week. The flowers on the altar this morning are given in appreciation and honor of Sean, Dana, Abby, and Phoebe for their services to our church over the past several, several months. Thank you. The flowers on the pedestal are in loving memory of Eddie Kinsey, given by John and Jenny Kinsey. And the flowers on the chancel pedestal are in honor of Sarah Burford's daughter, Christy, her son-in-law, Jay, and grandson, William, and they're given by Sarah. Thank you to everyone who has provided these lovely flowers this morning. Please stand and join together in our song of celebration. Please join me in our call to worship. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these.
let us pray. Almighty God, we praise and bless you for those whom you have sent in the power of the Spirit to preach the gospel to all nations. We thank you that in all parts of the earth, a community of love has been gathered together by their prayers and labors, and that in every place your servants call upon your name. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile the world to yourself, and it is his name that we pray together, the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our mission for November is night stay. As this program begins this week, we ask that you be in prayer for both the winter sheltering program and the CAPS night stay program. Our church will be providing food for both of these ministries. If you have any questions about these ministries, please see Priscilla Bunch. Also, please continue to pray for our friends with Supply and Multiply and our Haiti mission. Just as a reminder, all dollar bills placed in the offering plate go directly to this program. Please join me in our offertory prayer. Dear God, you are the generous king of the universe. Everything belongs to you, yet you graciously provide for even our smallest needs. We are grateful for your blessings, for we have enough to share with others. We now return a portion of your bounty for the work of the church. May all the people in our community rejoice in your goodness as we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Come on, the big lambs last Sunday did better than that. Good morning. Thank you, thank you. So I have something in my pocket here. Let's see. It's the biggest battery I could find. What do we use batteries for? Electricity. Electricity, good job. Flashlights on and off. We use batteries even in this microphone. We have batteries and lights. And nothing is more frustrating when you try to turn the flashlight and there's battery does not work. Isn't that frustrating? Exactly, isn't that frustrating? No one wants to go get a new battery, right? Those things are pricey. You, it is tall and square. I couldn't bring a car battery with me. That's in my car. So, batteries kind of remind me of something Paul said in 1 Corinthians. He said, I might have all, he said, I may know all the answers in the universe, but if I don't have love, I gain nothing. He said, if I don't have love, I don't have anything. 
Now, as you grow up, you might be really good teachers. You might be doing Lamb's Club really good. You might be mathematicians. But if you have love, if you don't have love, you have nothing. So when you look at a battery, I want you to remember that if you don't have a battery, your toy is not going to work, is it? But if you have love, you might, <laughs> it'll work. It'll work, right? So we are going to sing our Lamb's Club song. Let's be kind and loving to each one. Let's be kind and loving to each one. This is just the same as God has done. Let's be kind and loving to each one. Let's be kind and loving to each one. Thank you. I'm going to give Miss Lucy our battery today. be seated. <clears throat> Just ask that you uh, take some time this week to look over our prayer guide and note there are specific prayer requests and also things that you may want to think about as you pray this week. 
Um, also profile church family and the friends of our church. Just a couple updates. Jim McCrory had knee replacement surgery on Friday and he is now recuperating at home. And uh, Benita Rhodes had knee replacement as well a couple weeks ago and she's also recuperating home and doing well. We'd also like to um, pray for the family of Mills March who passed away this week. Mills was a friend to many in our congregation, and uh, we think about him often. Often, um, The Lord is in his holy temple. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, as we come before thy presence with thanksgiving and with song, mindful of thy great love and thy goodness, we give you thanks this day for the joys and the blessings of life. We have just sung a hymn, Lord, of counting our many blessings, naming them one by one, and how far can we count? As we look at ourselves, as we look inward, and we see how blessed we are. Yes, Lord, it's easy to complain. And we know how to do that very easily. But yet, O oh Lord, we have more blessings than we have complaints. We remember those, Lord, in many, many ways around the globe who suffer, who are hungry, who are thirsty, and even those in our own land, Lord, and we don't have to look far to see that. We thank you for this church, for the, its outreach and its ministry in so many ways, Lord, as it seeks to minister to the needs of others. And yet, O oh Lord, as we take inventory, there are perhaps many, many more ways that we can reach out and touch the lives of someone in your behalf. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, when we err and stray like lost sheep. And as we confess our sins, Lord, unto you and ask for your forgiveness, assure us ever of your pardon, Lord. As we look to you for the strength, for the guidance, and even the hope that is found in you. Bless us, Lord, as we continue our service and we make our prayers and our petitions in the name and in the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, choir, musicians. It's good to be back with you again. Always good to worship with you. Our scripture this morning we find in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, as we read together. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him. 
because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming to him, he said to Philip, where should we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled the twelve baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. May the Lord bless the reading of this, his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts ever be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and, yes, our Redeemer. Amen. There were two elderly gentlemen enjoying the sunshine on a park beat bench in Miami. And they'd been meeting at that park for years, over 10 years, enjoying the sun, chatting and discussing the weather, the world events, all the latest gossip they could muster up. They enjoyed each other's friendship. One day, the younger of the two turned to the other and said, I need to ask you a question, and I'm almost embarrassed to do so. After all of these years, and the other one said, Go ahead, go ahead and ask me. So the younger one said, what is your name? <laughs> I'm trying to remember, but I just can't. The older friend stared at him and it was almost two minutes before he ever said a word. And finally, in a tearful eye, he said, how soon do you have to know? <laughs> the question for us today is how soon do we have to say thanks? How soon do we realize that we must use what we have? It'd be a temptation to skip right on over all of this first section of John and move right on into the dialogues and the discourses that complete the chapter. After all, Matthew and Mark have already told these stories. And we've been there and we've done that with that miracle. But in this incident of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus demonstrates again and again what he also demonstrated throughout his ministry. 
that God cares about in response to human need. And that those of us who decide to follow God's way are called to join him in caring about others and seeking to meet their needs. In this particular passage, we learn several things that perhaps we should remember as we seek to be disciples of Christ. One, we're to use what we have available. Two, we're to do this with thanksgiving. And thirdly, we're to trust God for the increase and to waste no resources. Using what we have, but you say, preacher, we don't have very much. Not in comparison to other folks. But to many in this world, though, we are rich beyond compare. To some in this, many, in this world. Now, we may not have the latest thing of everything. I was talking to a fellow not long ago driving a Tesla, and I said, have you ordered the truck? He said, oh, yeah, but I don't know when in the world it'll ever get here. I can't hardly wait. I need that. And I thought, for what? For what? Confronted with 5,000 hungry people, the disciples of Jesus were thinking anxiously, and I expect wringing their hands, what in the world are we going to do? How are we going to feed this crowd? Let's send them away. Let them fend for themselves. We don't have enough to feed that many folks, not even a bite. And Jesus asked them, said, well, what do we have? And they said, well, we can come up with five barley loaves and a couple of fish. And Jesus said, you know what? We can use that. We can use that. Now, some of the disciples a bit later were able to practice what Jesus had preached one day after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension, Peter and John were waylaid at the temple by a lame man asking for money which they didn't have. However, the power of the risen Christ was at work in both of them. Peter replied to the lame man, I have no silver, I have no gold, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he took the lame man by the hand and raised him up. And he walked. If you're a parent, many in this room are grandparents, maybe great-grandparents. But you may have had the experience of a son or a daughter asking what he or she should do about a certain important issue in life. And you may realize that you don't have all the answers to tell them what to do, but if you follow the example of Jesus and the story of the feeding of the 5,000, you remember that we do have love. We have companionship to offer as that son or daughter makes that hard decision. In giving them the assurance of love and companionship, whatever their decision may be, we discover that we have given something more valuable than that which was sought. We may, in effect, say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto you. Too many today live with the myth of scarcity rather than with a doxology of abundance. I don't know who picked the hymns for this morning, but thank you. As we have sung, count your many blessings. We are more conscious most of the time of what we do not have than of what we do have. As a young bride Shortly after getting married, 
and we were talking and she was bemoaning the fact, you know, we don't even have a microwave. And I said, honey, when I got married, I didn't know what a microwave was. <laughs> Hadn't been invented. But we had a sink and we had soap and running water. And she said, do you know, and we don't have the latest vacuum cleaner. And we don't have a dishwasher in that apartment. And I said, that's kind of tough, isn't it? <laughs> As I tried to encourage working toward them, I said, you know what? We've been married almost 60 years. And we're still using early mixed furniture. She said, early mixed? I've heard of early American, but not early mixed. <laughs> I said, it was a piece of this and a piece of that from here and there. And I said, we still have it. We're still using it. And I tried to encourage her, look at what you do have. Look at what you do have. So often in life and in living, we're more conscious of what we do not have than what we do have. We're going to be faithful to the example of Christ. We're going to work in his spirit. Make use of what we have. Some months ago, I read about a man who fuels airplanes at Chicago O'Hare. 39-year-old bachelor who has become a foster father to almost 25 children as he gives $500 a month for the care of those children and yet he's never seen them. He's never seen them. He doesn't even know their names. But he writes to several of them each week or sends the letter to the folks, and they read it to them. And he said, I wish I were rich. For it's a beautiful experience to help a child. It's also a beautiful experience to add your gift of time and talent and money and all that we have to those of others, even in the church. As we share our gifts. And we see the impact of the results when a great variety is energized by the Spirit of Christ. Not long ago, I was going through some of my parents' things that had been put away to get to. Y'all don't have those things, do you? You're going to get to it. But anyway... I was going through a box of things that I had brought and I came across a ration book. Now some of you in this room may know what I'm talking about. A ration book. Young folks may not know that, but many in this room know what I'm talking about. During World War II, many consumer goods were rationed. And the story is told of one great Washington, D.C. lunch counter during that era who called out to the waitress, more sugar, more sugar for my coffee. And she shot back, stir what you got. Stir what you got. Whether we've got a lot to work with and to contribute to others or whether we have only what amounts to a few loaves and fishes. Fidelity to Christ means stirring what we've got. Also called to do so with thanksgiving, with gratitude. John writes that Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were in need and those who were seated. There are a lot of people walking around in this world dissatisfied with what they have envious of those who have so much more and dispirited by the suspicion 
that they'll never have that for which they yearn. Unless they're somehow rescued from that condition, many times they'll grow increasingly dissatisfied and sad. Thank God we have come now to know that our very life is a great gift. A gift from God. A gift, and we among 5,000 hungry souls have received from the hand of God what we need. Maybe not what we want, but I expect what we need. I don't see anyone naked running around in here. We're all clothed. I see beautiful hairdos, nice looking clothes. Precious gifts from God, modest maybe in comparison to some others and what others have. but not in envy. Young lady at 88 that I used to see in the nursing home, whose mental and physical capacities had diminished greatly. But one thing characteristic of her whole life has been a deep appreciation for what she and her family had in the providence of God. Now, the flip side of that has been a genuine delight in the good things that have come to others. You often hear, nobody's been as blessed as I've been. Using what we have with gratitude to God. And we trust God for the increase. Dolly Parton, that name might ring a bell. She often tells the story and sings the song of the coat of many colors, who as a young child grew up with next to nothing. And her mother took pieces of cloth and sewed them together and made her a coat of many colors and she wore it. And it later developed into a song and she gives thanks to God for it. Multi-billionaire. But she has not forgotten the blessings of the Lord. I'm as grateful as you are for the gifts that have come to us from the hands of a loving God. Daily bread and work to do. Friends to love and forgiveness of sins and recovers from illness and injury and physical and emotional strength with which to bear the stresses and the trials of life, but gratitude. For the gift is not as deep as gratitude for our confidence that the one who gave them to us can be trusted and to continue giving them in the measure needed for what remains of our lives in this world and can be trusted to bring us a life even far greater than the fullness with which and when this life ends. God can so often do with what we have far beyond what we could ever hope or even imagine. Sometimes as you visit a friend in distress, you need to do so not with anxiety of what you're going to say. Sometimes we put our foot in the mouth before we get there. But trust God that he will use our presence, simply our presence, as a means of healing. As we give unto the Lord the conviction that God can and will use what we give to his glory. And he says something else. Gather up the fragments. Let's not waste our resources. When they had eaten their fill, Jesus told them, gather up the fragments left over, that nothing 
may be lost. Here again, we are addressed as both receivers and as givers. And as a receiver, I'm challenged not to take lightly what I'm given, nor to let what I'm given go to waste. And I'm not talking about this waste. Whether it's food or what, or energy or other things to sustain life and to enrich my life and then enrich the lives of others. I'm not let forgiveness be wasted. I'm not to keep on feeling guilty about things of long ago repented. I'm not to keep yearning for what's gone and waste the power of God's spirit to help me embrace what is at hand. Don't waste by letting them rust out. As I met with a gentleman a couple of years ago and tears running down his eyes, he had gone home to get clothes for his wife to be buried in. And as he opened those drawers and saw piles and piles of clothes and a note in there that said, to you be used later. And he thought to himself, what a waste. What a waste. So we looked to Jesus on the hillside long ago. And we see him perform there an act of ministry, which reminds us of who we are and what we're called to do as Christians. And that as we're continual recipients of the material and the spiritual gifts from the hand of God. We're also a people called to minister to others using what we have, giving thanks to God and trusting God for the results of our giving and not wasting our resources by overuse or underuse. Henry Smith wrote the words of his hymn, Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done. For us giving thanks, based on Luke 1, 49, when he said, For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has shown the strength with his arm. He scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. May God ever bless us as we approach Thanksgiving and may he give us ever the motivation and the will to embrace our calling as Christians using what we have. Yes, that question mark is there for a purpose in the bulletin. Are we doing so? If not, why not? Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, help us continually to look about us. And though we may not be as blessed as the one seating next to us, for God has blessed us all in different ways and in so many ways. Help us to realize what we have and using that for your glory in reaching out to others in the name and in the spirit of Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.
And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion and fellowship of his spirit, rest and abide with us all this day and even forevermore. Amen. Amen.